Welcome to Studio Biz and All That Jazz. I'm excited because today I am joined by Melissa J. Scott, who is a marketing expert, but she's not your average marketing person. I, I want to be really clear about that. She talks about rock star confidence and self-belief and self-love when it comes to personal branding, and she has an emphasis on connection, you know, delivering her message with humor and real life experiences and depth. So, you know, this is a goodie, guys. So make sure you continue to tune in because the conversation I have with Melissa J. Scott is really uh, eye-opening when it comes to your marketing strategy. And I love that she talks about rock star confidence because I talk about rock star branding and she's actually in a rock band, by the way. She's a singer in a rock band, <laughs> which I love so much. I used to be a singer in a rock band, so we're super aligned. <laughs> And, you know, we met quite some time ago, actually, at a women's business networking event. And then I caught up with her a couple of weeks ago, again, at another event um, in Newcastle, which is a couple of hours drive from me. And it was just lovely to see her. And I had to get her on the show because she's got a lot of golden nuggets when it comes to your marketing and how to really be that rock star in your business. So we're going to talk about that. Now, before we dive in with Melissa J. Scott, because I know you're going to absolutely love this episode, I just wanted to mention that Talent Manager Bootcamp doors are now open. Woohoo! Uh, now, I've talked about this a little bit, quite a bit, uh, for the last couple of weeks. And the reason is because it doesn't come around often when I open up these course doors. Okay, it's very limited. I only open them up for, you know, a week and a bit. And then the, the door shut and they don't open again for several months. Now, Talent Manager Bootcamp is in launch, uh, but please note that it's the last time for 2023. So if you've ever thought about, you know, representing your students in film, television, theatre, commercial, on stage and more, this is the course to do it. And I'm here to support you in really creating that studio biz that you desire and that you deserve. Okay, and you can do that through providing amazing opportunities for your students and amazing opportunities uh, for your community, right? So, yeah, Talent Manager Bootcamp is the way. Um, I'm going to break it down, make it super easy for you. Make sure you jump in if you're interested. You can learn more by heading to josephinelancuba.com forward slash TMB. I'll pop a link in the show notes. Uh, so that's what I wanted to tell you. Yay, big round of applause for Launch Week of Talent Manager Bootcamp, the last one for this year. All right, let's jump in. Um, now, I will mention that Melissa J. Scott currently is working in her own boutique agency, Divine Creative Agency, for the past 25 years. She has seen every marketing fad come and go and has learned that one thing never goes out of style, human to human connection and authentic likability. She works tirelessly to bring out the best in her clients so they have the confidence to be themselves in their marketing and sales and in their life. She coaches her clients in marketing and branding around the art of developing their own unique personality, how to find their authentic confidence and self-belief, and how to connect with their team and audience by creating a community that is loyal and refers. So anyway, we're going to talk about your rock star confidence and how to bring that into your marketing in this episode. So let's do it with Melissa J. Scott. Hello and welcome to Studio Biz and All That Jazz. I'm your performing arts business coach and host, Josephine Lancuba. This show is designed to bring you inspiration, information, and the instruments you need to create and grow the studio biz of your dreams. I will bring you a mix of solo episodes as well as interviews where I tap into the minds of industry experts. My career started as a performer over two decades ago. I later became a speaker, theatrical producer and talent manager, as well as having a successful teaching career in singing, drama and dance. Ten years into my professional journey, I became a mama of two and with a baby on my hip, opened up my very own performing arts studio. From hardship and humble beginnings to four studio locations and a multi six-figure performing arts biz, I know how to attract students and keep them coming back for more. And in the show, I will share with you my experiences to help you thrive and fast track your path to success. I know you have a spark inside of you with dreams and goals for the future. 
as your coach and mentor, I'm here to help you step into your limelight and be a cheerleader in your ear each and every week. So get ready to be entertained and inspired as we talk studio biz and all that jazz. Hello to the wonderful Melissa J. Scott. Welcome to Studio Biz and All That Jazz. Hello. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Now, uh, I knew I had to have you on because you are a personal branding and marketing expert. And uh, I talk about having a rock star brand and being the rock star of your business. And you, Melissa, are an actual rock star. <laughs> so <laughs> Very so tell, us about, tell us about yourself. Tell us about your background and um, yeah, and how you came about to being in this space. Uh, okay, thank you. I Look, I started off um, as a graphic designer, which is a lot of people, we sort of start in an industry. And that was nearly 30 years ago when I did that training. So you can imagine like computers had barely even come in. And I did that sort of training, started as a graphic designer, and then have morphed my way in my business. So I've been in this business, Divine Creative Agency, for 25 years. So, you know, you have to roll with the times, don't you, in technology. So then, you know, got into web development, then it was all about social media and, and marketing that way. Then I started learning a lot about personal branding. And now, obviously, I talk to people a lot more about their content creation. I'm still a graphic designer at heart and we still build websites. But really, to differentiate yourself as a business owner these days, it's all about your personal brand and you putting yourself forward as the face of your company. And so that's what I've morphed my business and service into as well, because I identify what do people need now. That's what they need. They need information about not just how to do it, but why to do it. And we've talked a lot about that with your clients is identifying that that's your point of difference. And so I'm really passionate about helping my clients. I've done a lot of work, a lot of personal development work, and I'm a trained NLP um, provider. And I also do like energy clearing. I'm a little bit woo-woo. I'm a bit of a rock star in my personal life. <laughs> yeah, you're a singer like, in a band, aren't you? Yeah, it just means I front a band. And I've only gone back to that in the past couple of years. Last year, I did a body sculpting competition. I've just come back this year from a two-month lap around Queensland. I'm an avid camper, and I create content for um, two companies, MDC Campers and Caravan World. So I took a two-month working holiday where I travelled all around Queensland, predominantly by myself, towing a caravan, creating content. So I guess I love the variety and the spice of life and making your life work with your business. And we can with technology and I can because I have a well-known personal brand and clients that keep coming back to me because they know who I am. So that's me. And, you know, a lot of people, um, well, everyone really listening to this show are from a performing arts background. And, and that's why I also invited you on because I, I just thought, you know what, I love that you are a singer and that you are a performing artist and you get that side of things because uh, there's something to be said about being a performer and, you know, having that limelight on you, especially in your heyday years. So when you're younger, you're a performer, the limelight's on you, you know, whether that be dancer, singer, actor, whatever. But then as you change, your life develops and, and you know, you move on, your body changes, your looks change. And I find that a lot of my clients, uh, even ones that were once professional performers, now feel like they don't want to step in front of the camera because they've changed or they just don't see the value in it or they don't feel confident or or anything like that. I mean, what's your take on that in, in relation to <laughs> being the performer well, to then changing the way we perform for our business? Oh, I love that. I really love that you've identified that and I love that you got the clarity that that's where some of your clients are at. So I'm 52 and so I'm really living it in every part of my life too, you know. So I sing in a band with other 50-year-old guys and it has been commented on by people in um, some of the places where we played that I'm older and it's like I'm the same age as the guys and I look a lot better than they look but being a female, it's, it's, it's you know, there's a lot of younger competition. So there's a lot of 25-year-old singers out there. So just using that analogy as a performer, I never, ever look at them as competition, though. No one's competition. Like what I do is unique. What I bring to the stage and my energy, whether I'm doing it in a video performance for my business, a podcast episode right now with you, a webinar that I might be doing, or singing. It doesn't all, and I'm also a bit of a journalist. I write for Caravan World as well. Whatever it is that I'm bringing, I bring me to the forefront because I know that no one else does as good a job 
of being me as me. And that's all I've got sometimes. And I just draw on that. I know who I am. And I think that's probably why I can be confident and step up because I know what I am and I don't run away from what I'm not. I happily tell people that I'm 52. I'm proud of it. I've lived a really awesome life. I really had lots of experiences because of that. And I think that's my wealth that I bring. And one of my personal missions is actually to make middle-aged people, because we're middle-aged people, (laughs) make us feel more vibrant and sexy and comfortable and confident in who we are, not hide from it. You know, I'm very natural. I don't have Botox. I don't have any surgery. I don't have any kind of enhancements. I just, just pretty basic and be proud of that and be who you are. I do look after myself, take good care. That you makes did it a easy. bodybuilding competition. I got to tell you, that's <laughs> that's quite an achievement. Is that yeah. something you always did, or is that something no. new that you did at, at this age? I took, that up, I took that up when I was forty nine. So, yeah, I know. I just wanted a challenge for something in my life that um, was for coming up for my fiftieth year, and so I just. Oh, I'm a real spur of the moment person. I saw a friend, like a, a, an acquaintance online and she was doing bodybuilding. And I was like, I've always said I wanted to do bodybuilding. So I just threw myself headfirst into doing it. And I guess one of the things that I have in my life is well, why not? Why not? Why can't I? Like I always have these blinkers on about, well, why can't I do that? If I want to do that, I can do that. Why can't I? And Absolutely. I, I find it really interesting that in a live performance setting that people have commented on your age, whether it was negative, positive, the fact that they're even saying it. Isn't oh, that it's funny? Every gig, every gig I do. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Is it coming yeah. from the audience or from, from the, the audience is coming? Oh, yeah. From the audience, it comes from the people and it's usually always complimentary. And it's and it's very much inspirational, like as in, wow, I love that you're doing this. It's so great. I sh- and then they relate it back to themselves like oh, I should be doing this or that in my life you know because like, they sort of see why why can't I you know but mm-hmm. I had a little just a little bit of negative stuff never came to my face just came from behind the scenes and I just felt like well they're just dickheads that's the can I swear yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it's a it's a minuscule amount and you know what I'm bringing it back to what I do for a living which is creating content and te- teaching business owners or performing artists how to create content and how to market themselves on personal branding you will have situations where people will say something negative probably doesn't come back to your face it's probably said about you behind you you just have to be a little bit tougher than that and know who you are and um it's way more of a reflection on them than it is on you and just keep doing what you do and do it so good that age is not it's just age not- and size and all of those things. And yeah. I find that that can be a real boundary for me, especially dance studio owners who no longer have those bodies, for example. Um, it's impossible. I've gone through menopause. I can't have, I've had three, ba- three babies, which are now grown men, gone through menopause. Um, I've had grief in my life as well. I lost my husband six years ago. Like it, the- your body doesn't look the same as it used to look, but you work with what you've got and you just work to your assets. But you have to be working on your self-esteem and your self-confidence and your self-belief and your personal development at the same time as you're working on every other aspect of your performance and your business. You're still a business owner, even if you're a performer. So you need to be working on that aspect and you need to be working on your self-belief as well. So how do we show up in a way that promotes our business positively Mm. um, where we're showing up as ourselves. So not hiding because this happens with a lot of my clients and and I work through it with them and I teach, you know, become, you know, the rock star of your business. Mm. Uh, Now, a lot of them are afraid to show up online. They don't show themselves in images, for example, on social media. They're not highlighted in their newsletters they're not some of them don't even have anything about themselves on their websites or the oh. photo they have on their website is literally from 20 years ago from when they were their gorgeous selves and gorgeous as in yeah what they yeah. perceive right not not what i yeah. do um and you know not not wanting to be seen in photos and you know all of this stuff that they've got to overcome so let's talk about that and let's talk about showing up and you know, how can we show up and why should we show up? Well, why we should show up is because people connect with people. So they're not going to connect with your studio name. They're not going to connect with 
they're not even really, they might know you from your past, but they're not going to connect with you because of your past. It's like real estate agents putting up photos of themselves 10 years ago, then they rock up to do it, you know, and then they look completely different. You have to own who you are and be who you are. But I did a little bit of work on this in one of my memberships today. It's about knowing, it's really that self-analysis of knowing who you are and knowing why you do what you do. And knowing who you inspire and who you impact and and the good that you do bring to the world and in, in, in your environment. And so for me, I can only talk about my own personal experience. I know that I want to motivate and inspire as many people as I can who are kind of in this middle sector of their life where they still feel really vibrant and alive and got so much to give and just want to work on what it is that they need to do. So I know who I inspire and I know that I do that well. So I have the evidence there. And everybody, your your people that you're talking about running these dance studios, they'll have the evidence there of who they've inspired personally. So it's about really focusing not on yourself and what you don't have, but focusing on who you help and making, showing up and making your content and making your website about them. How do you help them? What do you have that's unique about yourself that you bring to the table that your audience loves about you and keeps coming back for you? Because that's why you have a business. They obviously love you, whether it's your teachers, your style, your you might have a unique, I don't know, thing that you teach, whatever it is that is unique about you, you need to tap into it, find it, and then 10 exit <laughs> and talk yes. about that. You really need to. And stop comparing yourself. The, and really get to the core of why. And I look, look, dancers is a really great example. I did 13 years of Highland dancing when I was a kid. And um, so I danced to show, to try and win love from my mother. Like, let's really, let's be really honest. That's why I danced. It was to make her feel better and to elevate how she felt about herself because herself, she never danced. So I've done that personal work. I understand where it all came from. Every time I won a trophy or a medal, she would put me up, the pretty little girl, I was one of three sisters and I was paraded around and I was made to feel special because I was that person in the family that made her feel better. And I I imagine people are relating to this, you know, because it's Mm. kind of that dance world, isn't it? Why do I do this to my kid? Oh my God, no. (laughs) I've done a lot of, so I've done a lot of work on that since. Mm. And I now realize my value doesn't come from being that amazing performer and that pretty little girl that won all those trophies back then. Mm. My value comes from what I put in to my life for me to help others mm. and I, I've let all that go and I've got a great relationship with my mum it's got there's no but I had to do that work to figure it out where's it all coming from this self-criticism and, and this self-perfection because we're not going to be that hot glamorous thing that we were 20 years ago but we're a hot glamorous thing that we are now so be that now but work on who it's for so you can make them the focus and not yourself in as your motivation Hmm. From a from a team perspective, you you mentioned that um, briefly in passing. But from a team perspective, um, our teachers are really also the face of our business because they yeah. are running our classes. So, do we need to, as business owners, how do we work with that? Do we need to be thinking about their personal brand within the the, the confines of our business? You need to know why people are coming to your business. If they're coming to your business because of you, then that's who you focus on. If people are coming to your business because you've got two or three particular teachers that are incredibly popular, then you need to bring them into your marketing as well. I think that's only wise. But you need to have a little bit of, I know people are very scared to put their teachers up or anybody that works for them because they're worried they'll get poached. They're worried that they'll go off to the competition. But if you run a really great business and you have got a really wonderful ethos in your company, people don't want to leave. They do it. Your team will be working for you if you run a really great business and make them feel really valued and like part of a family and a team. They know they can't go out and emulate and do what you do. So they'll stay with you if if you have that great culture. So never be afraid to put them up as part of your marketing as well. And maybe you can take more of a backseat and be more of a leader and a bit of a, you know, that stature behind the business, but put your younger, whoever it is, younger, older, whatever it is up front as well as. But And as well as being the key, right? Because let's see, though, you can't rely on Team Solar. Yes, you want to put them out there and celebrate the wins. And and I find studio owners will do that. So they'll talk about, 
oh, you know, this teacher did this amazing thing. Congratulations. She's all over the newsletter. Yeah. Wonderful. You know, she just got a role in Wicked, the musical. Congratulations or whatever. That's great. But then they're not doing it for themselves. So when yeah. you win that business award, you might put the trophy up with the team, but you're not really saying, hey, I've done this. And, you and, you know, it. and yeah, you've got to celebrate those wins because it, I think it, it goes it goes hand in hand. So you're celebrating team, you're showcasing how amazing they are, but you must still continue to showcase yourself because team can move on eventually, right? They can and they do totally. eventually. You totally. Know. Yeah. So we need to be, you need to be stronger. Though. Yeah, you need to be stronger than that. Yes. You can't base all your success around one or two key team members. That's fatal for your business. And you've led them anyway to being in that role and, and for their success. So take it. <laughs> you know, I think as Australians, I don't know if you've got an international audience, but definitely with Australians, we all know about tall poppy syndrome. Yes. So, you know, if we we've got to, we have to move past that. No one's going to move past it for us you know so you know when I put up photos of myself <laughs> I was the only person in the over 50s category and and I was painfully aware I was the oldest person on the stage and and not the most muscliest and and certainly not the most in peak but I know I got the loudest clap and the most um I was embraced by the audience and I really worked with what I had <laughs> which was enthusiasm and a big smile and and pride and and I and I sort of worked it anyway and I was they put me up with the um the 40 year olds and and you know I held my own and and I was just proud to be there but I know when I put photos up online I'm positive people would have said something critical I'm a million percent sure but it's none of my business zero none of my business and I just know and 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 I wrote articles that went along with it all about my journey and the inspiration why I did it and you'd have to have a, a heart that's cold, like ice, to not be at least just enjoy the journey, you know? Like it's, so work with what you've got. Work with the stories of your business and your own success and and where you were, but where you are now and how you got here and how you've motivated and inspired your team for their success. Like you have to be, own that queen role or king role. Like be just own it unashamedly and with, you know, and thank everybody that helped you get there and have grace, have all these things, but don't, don't hold yourself back. Don't, don't be this modesty thing that we do in Australia is ridiculous. It, mm. it hurts our businesses and the people that are prepared to do it, the studio owners that are prepared to put themselves forward and, and know who they are and know what impact that they have. They're the ones that are taking all the business. And so what do you want? What do you want to be? Do you want to be the, sh you know, you're a performer. So be a performer for your business. That's be a right. Are you a studio owner looking to create a buzz within your studio walls and increase your revenue, your student retention, and also bump up your industry credibility? That's right. Talent Manager Bootcamp is back, but it is for the last time in 2023. So studio owners, you're invited to join now. Head to josephinelanecuba.com forward slash TMB to find out more about the course that can take you from studio owner to talent manager with confidence and ease. Let's do it. Link is in the show notes. Back to the show. So we've talked about why, why we need to show up you know, and and have that personal branding around ourselves as a part, a key player in the business. Yeah. What about how? So, you know, you're a marketing expert. How do we market ourselves? Where do we place ourselves? Like, what what are the ways in which we can market our personal branding? Great question. So, first of all, understand who your audience is, and then you go to where your audience is. So whatever part, whatever, if you're regional, if you're city, you'll understand, you know, the habits of where your audience are coming from. Perhaps it's Instagram. So be on Instagram. If you have got a programs that you're actually selling around the globe, be on YouTube, you know, be wherever your audience is most of the time, but also 
don't forget to do partnerships. I love this. Strategic alliances where everyone just thinks straight away about social media. But what about strategic alliances with other people who are great feeders for your business that you could be partnering, other business owners in your town or your local region that you could be running joint events with and doing joint promotions together. You could be crossing over into their email database with email. You could be creating webinars online or you could be running... um, Days where you get a whole lot of people come in and you just run a special event, teach them one special thing. Like really get creative and think about who you can go there with together and collaborate rather than always, you know, if you've got this kind of like just all about me, 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 and too scared to share success with other people, like being a performer, you know, it's always about many other people, not just yourself. So bring that across even with your personal branding. And you might even find it easier to cross promote and cross market yourself with other people. So you don't feel like the spotlight's just on you. It really is a team thing. So I I would do love that. Yeah. 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 It it feels better, doesn't it? When we do it together. It's interesting because I actually um, adapted this, uh, this way of thinking uh, a couple of years ago. So the way I saw it was we, if we share a similar interest or, or marketplace, like for example, youth, you know, for example, I teamed up with a party company and this party company has um, services, you know, all around Australia and whatever. And they said, um, I wanted to add a benefit to my studio members when they join. So all of my students get, when they join us each year, they get like a, a gift voucher from the party company. Perfect. And, and so they get a benefit. I actually also am an affiliate with them. So if my people book, I get, <laughs> I get a little bit of money, um, mm. which is nice. So we've got a deal there. And they happily um, share and promote our services amongst their people and we happily share and promote their services amongst our people. Now, we're not competitors, but we share the same client base, right? Exactly. So that's worked out really beautifully. And we've been working together now for a couple of years. And the owner of that party company has been on my podcast. And we're just, and then because we had this relationship, we created a musical theater show together last year and we toured it. And we made literally tens of thousands of dollars in profit in this touring um, because she reached out to me because she knew what I did, which was create original um, musical theatre content. And she said, oh, I've got this client that's looking for a show that I'm, you know, we're selling to a vacation care client. Do you have a show, Joe? And we'll work together. We'll collaborate because we'd already established this relationship through this little flyer affiliate drop thing that we did. And it's amazing what came from that. We ended up touring Sydney and Melbourne with this show. And this all came from, let's just swap flyers and do something. Like that's where it started. And it evolved to this big thing, um, which was amazing. Um, I I do this sort of thing all the time. I do remember, though, this one time um, on a Saturday at our, um, at the time we were in, not Annandale, we were in Stanmore, one of our studio. I've got four club locations. Um, one of our studios in Stanmore, there was a new coffee shop, a little hole in the wall that popped up literally around the corner from my studio. And we used to do on a Saturday, um, over a hundred kids would come through on a Saturday. So I went around to the corner shop. I said, hey, I was wondering, maybe we could um, have a conversation. I don't know if there's some sort of special offer you could offer my clients or whatever, because parents have nothing to do and they're waiting around and I can send them to your coffee shop. And maybe we can like talk about how we can like benefit each other. And he didn't want to do it. He goes, no, I don't need that. Thanks. And I was (laughs) like, okay, cool. They ended up closing down within 12 months. And and I tell you what, what a silly, he's like, I don't, I don't want to give any special. No, no, no. I don't need that. And I just thought, dude, why would you just turn down me who has a hundred plus parents sitting around waiting and doing nothing that asked me where to get coffee from every single Saturday. And I got you on this corner and I got the other coffee shop on the other, like on the other corner, but they're a little bit further. So I thought this would be a better arrangement. Yeah. yeah. He said, no, I said, forget you went to the other coffee shop and they were all on board. They're still open several years later and the other guys closed down. Why would you turn that away? Like, why would you turn that? Yeah. It's just, I think if someone, I think that the point of what I'm trying to say is, and I've gone on a tangent here, Melissa. 
but it's unreal. It's a great story. It's a really yeah. and because I've got something to add to it once you say it, and then I'll add what I reckon. Yeah, I just think you know what, like that's if I think we need to be open minded. So when someone comes to us, yeah, we need to think you know what, let's not see ourselves as competition or I'm not willing to offer anything special to your clients. No way. Or have a conversation. Don't shut it down immediately. Be open to it. And then think about other people in your network or people that you can collaborate with and and approach them. And the worst case scenario is they do what that guy did to me and they say, forget you, see you later. And the best case scenario is you end up building a beautiful relationship like I did with the party company and we ended up creating amazing profitable activities together over time because of the relationship built so wow. yeah that, that's what I wanted to add there because I think people don't especially studios they actually don't think about this well that's what I was talking about we run a business we run our personal brands don't miss the missing element which nearly every single person does which is we've got to work on our personal development at the same time he obviously has not worked on his at all <laughs> he has a real, he has a real closed off mindset so he had and it could even have been a self-sabotaging mindset he might have even in the back of his mind going oh that means I've got to put on another staff member I don't really I can't you know I just don't want that pressure I don't want to have to work hard on a Saturday God knows what was running through his mind who knows but you have to have this abundance mindset and the law of reciprocity mindset which is I can help you you can help me and when we refer to each other it, you know it's just this beautiful energy and it, and it and expands you know People, sometimes when I talk like that, people stare at me blankly. <laughs> mm. And other people go, I totally get it. I 100% get it. Let's go for it and let's grow together. You know, and I think business in the future, people ask me all the time, what's the future of marketing? And that is the future of marketing. A, your personal brand, that's always, that's the now of marketing and the future. But the collaboration thing the, and creating a community around you. Um, dance studios are a really great example. You guys have got a ready-made community, but the more you can feed that community with special offers and special value adds, which is what you're doing with the coffee story and the other story, the more people will remain loyal and stay in your community because it feels good to them. And the trust that you build up in within that, anything that you recommend to these people, they're going to pay attention to. Like you'll they just can't help it because they like you and you are so so there for them as as the business yeah, owner. The no like and trust factor, right? Totally. But you're there for them, not just in providing a dancing service, but anything that they kind of need. I'm sure you've got deals going with costume makers and yeah, I got a jazz shoot YouTube. deal going at the moment. Yeah. So we do do that. Hair, people that do hair, people that do makeup, all mm. the things. Build this massive connect connective community around you of really good people and everybody's business gets to really grow and flourish and then if you're all working your personal brands hard you don't feel so exposed and out there by yourself it's a team effort mm. you can't lose you just you can't no, <laughs> but it's right. and I think um it's interesting because uh the performing arts you know whether you're a dance studio singing studio acting studio whatever performing arts spaces can be highly competitive and I think now we're starting to see a shift. More people are starting, like even, for example, you know, I've got a, a membership um, a group, Studio Biz Success, and I feel that, you know, we're building a beautiful community within that. Um, you're seeing other people do similar things. I think it is shifting, but still there is a fear of this competitive nature, like we can't connect, we can't talk, we can't, you know, mm -hmm. all of that. Or I can't use the same provider as that person or, oh, no, if I... If I speak to them, you know, whatever. I just feel like we need to shift and change our mindset around that because collaboration is key and it is the way of the future. Like you mentioned, it's a now thing, but it's also a future thing, as is personal branding. I don't know what the, the, the landscape of business, you know, was like 20 years ago per se in relation to this, but I do know that since the introduction of social media, um, people are looking differently at brands and they are looking at the faces and the people and the stories behind them. I mean, even as far as the website bio, people think, oh, no one cares about that, whatever. I've got clients that still don't like, you know, and we're talking through this, um, but working on, you know, improving the way they present themselves, even through their website, you know, having a picture, a current picture of themselves and not just a bio that says, um, you know, I achieved this, I have this degree and this thing, 
but actually a little bit of storytelling like how important is the story, story that we present yeah. in our in our bios and information that's what people relate to so the about us page on your website is the second most visited page you got your home page your about us page hmm, really two that's high, interesting two highest traffic pages yeah wow. so tell me that people aren't interested in your story of course they're interested on my website you can go to that melissajscott.com if you want to have a look at it I just smash you (laughs) (laughs) stories about me, but also about clients, lots of testimonials, video testimonials, lots of evidence of who I've helped, lots of, um, um, so I talk, uh, there's photos of me there, my body sculpting, me singing, me, definitely me working, definitely me behind the scenes, creating content and showing people what I'm doing. There's the podcast there. If I've got an upcoming webinar, that's there. Like it's, it's just this whole big, beautiful, um, relationship piece really on connection on how people can feel like they they either vibe with me or they don't vibe with me and either is fine I don't need and you don't need to as a business owner you don't need to have everybody love you you just need to have a certain amount of people really love you Mm. that's way more and way more um, successful for your business than having everybody think oh she's nice he's nice but no one's got an opinion really about well, you. Well, it's like people that have, um, you know, let's say 10,000 followers on social media versus um, 1,000 and the pers- and, and some people have a million followers and don't know how to sell anything to them. So all of that stuff doesn't matter if they're not engaged, right? So it's about the engagement. And so, yes, it doesn't matter if you've got even the numbers of how many students you have it, you could have 300 students doing one class, right? Or you could have 150 doing five classes, you know, and because they're highly engaged, they want everything you have to offer. They're, they're raving fans. They love you. They're going to buy from you, right? So what would you rather have? It's, it, you know, you can have a vanity metrics, which is the 300, or you can have the real, the real kahunas, right? Which is that 150 buying more from you. Um, where would people start? So what would be the advice you'd say, okay, you've got a studio owner, you've got um, someone, a small business owner that hasn't really showed up in their business. They don't really know how. What's the first thing you can you can do to start showing your face to the public and start presenting yourself to your to the to the people you serve? Funny you should ask. <laughs> Cause um I've got a great example. Yesterday I went on. Um, there's a my best friend's personal trainer has got somebody he's employed to do his Instagram posts he has 11 people following his page and he's getting her to put up all these posts which is utterly pointless 11 people who are already his existing clients are seeing it you need to go where the audience is so you need to if you've got not much of an audience not much of a presence you need to do what I'm doing with you right here today you need to go onto other get in front of other people's audiences so Think about the strategic alliances. Think about who do you already know and have great relationships with. Get on their podcast. Contact Josephine. Become Come on her podcast. You know, be in front of people so you can grow that audience. Put out a webinar. Put out some sort of thing, which is, um, we call it like a call to action, which is really high value, some kind of information that's really pertinent to what is what you do in your business. You know, it could be, um, say you run a, oh God, it's going to be a bad example. 10 top tips to become a prima ballerina. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, whatever it is, something that's really specific that you know is your sweet spot. Create that call to action, put it on your website, but then put it out. Somebody that's in a membership that we're part of, she does this really well. She's a speaker. She has a ebook which she puts out and she sells for $15 and she sells one a day and she puts $15 back into the marketing of that um through Facebook or wherever it is that she's promoting it and it actually is self-funded it's cost zero to her but it brings in thousands of new leads every year because people have looked at it they've opted in for it whether they bought it or not is up to them she makes a little bit of money from them buying the ebook with whatever it was the call to action but why she's interested is she gets thousands of email addresses then that goes into your email nurturing system and you start sending out weekly emails. Yeah, it could even be like you said with the ballet thing. I mean, um, often parents are confused about when is it safe and the right time to have their child move from, you know, uh, going into point shoes, for example. So you can have a parent's fact sheet on 
yeah. you know, the safe and right time to, to put on the point shoes, you know. Um, and when people download these free options, they have to opt in and provide an email address. That's kind of the point. So you want to grab their email address. You want to make sure that you're getting their details so that they become a part of your mailing list and then you can, you know, nurture them and market to them and and speak to them. Make offers. Make them an offer every week of something different. Communicate with them. Give them stuff all the time. But always make a little offer. Like at the end of this, I'll make a little offer. You know, just, just a little offer in there. Drop it in subtly. The people that have really resonated with you while you're doing it will be like, I'm going to take, I'll take that. That sounds yeah. fantastic. The people yeah. that don't, that's cool. They, yeah, you know, totally. And they're ready, they will. And if they're not ready, they won't, but they might tell somebody else about it. Yeah, you know, yeah. Just keep being helpful. Understand who you help. Really focus on that. Don't make it about yourself. It's not about what your hair looks like. It's not about... Oh, I'm a size 14. I used to be an eight. Who cares? No one cares. Everyone relates and make it about the audience that you're actually serving and serve them well. Give mm. them good stuff. Don't, and that's the other tip. Don't be afraid to give them your best stuff. Like, because people will buy into your programs or come to your dance school because they want you or they want your teacher or they want you that leads that teacher, whatever it is, that special magic. You might have shown them how to do this amazing thing, and you're like, "Oh, I've just showed them the best thing that I ever that I've ever known." The they want more. They want more, and they want to be part of your community. We come back to that community word again. Yeah, we're all just absolutely. human beings. We're all animals, really. We hang well, in. They child. come for you, and they'll stay for the community. I think. Yeah. Okay. yeah, and you're the leader of that community. That's right. To be the leader, which means what does um because we're, we're going to wrap, wrap up soon. I've got, I've got back-to-back podcast interviews today, everybody. Okay. I'm just letting you know, I've been adopting something that I preach, which is batching. So yeah. I'm looking at um, trialing this. So there you go. I like to batch things and saves me time. It's a productivity um, thing that I do for everyone listening. But I wanted to ask you, uh, Melissa, and, you know, I, I view you as someone that's really highly motivated. I mean, you know, you're bodybuilding, you're singing on stage at 52, you're, you're running this um, successful personal branding and marketing business and, and, and your um, divine creative agency. So you've got a lot of balls in the air, but you seem you seem to have it all together. And that could be your market. That could be the way you market, right? But I would love to know, how do you define success? Like, what does success look like to you? <laughs> you couldn't have asked me a more perfect question because um, I think about this all the time. There's things that I'm not unreal at and um, my bookkeeper is right here right now <laughs> next to me and she's probably chuckling away because she knows what I'm not good at. So there's things that we're not good at and we don't, you know, vulnerability, you can share that with your audience too if you want to. But success really to me is, you know, we're on this planet for a certain period of time and I have had the experience at, at 46, when I was 46, my husband died um out of the blue like really out, all of a sudden so this really I really learned a lot about myself and what makes what is success in life because his life was cut so short um but what was really amazing before he passed away just out of the blue he said and and he had no idea this was going to happen he had a massive heart attack he said if I die tomorrow I could be happy because I have such a beautiful family my children love me I love my job And I just feel like I've done everything that I wanted to in life. You know, he felt he had a really exciting job and he traveled a lot around Australia. And and I thought nothing of that comment, but I think that's what it comes down to. It's it's not about the money and it's not about what you acquire and what you buy. For me, success is very much about when your head hits the pillow at night, how do you feel? Are you happy? Are you, are you, I know I'm happy. Like I'm happy with people that I've helped during the day. I'm happy with my family life. I'm happy with where I live. I'm happy with how I have got a lot of exciting projects on at the same time. I'm not just driven by just one thing. I have a lot of balance. I meditate every day. I exercise every day and I walk my dog every day. And I think they're really critical things that I do that makes me really happy. I have good friendships. I just think that's success. I just, Mm. there's things I need to tweak about, about the future. You know what that looks like being living in a Western world. But if, yeah, I think, do you have inner peace? Probably, you know, you, do you feel peaceful and you're smiling and, and do you make an impact on the world? That's success, isn't it? Beautiful. I love that. Hmm. And, you know, success looks so different to everyone and there's no right or wrong, but I love that yours is really um, focused on that inner peace and, and, and that relationship as, and relationships as well, which is really beautiful. Who or what inspires you? 
Oh, I watched so my clients inspire me and just watching them. Some I've got some pretty successful clients, pretty amazing what they've built and grown. But one in particular, he's really inspired me because he was really excellent at making money. And just recently we caught back up again and, you know, his business turns over a couple of hundred mil every year, but he's actually worked on his personal life now and now his personal relationships are matching his business. So that really inspired me. But from a, like a, a well-known person name, Arnold Schwarzenegger totally inspires me. I watched, there's a thing on Netflix, which has just come out, the Arnold um, documentary. It's a three-part series. I saw it on Netflix. Check it out please watch it like I don't watch tv that's another that's another life hack that I have I don't watch tv I don't watch the news I stay right away from all that kind of negativity I really am very very concentrated on having good energy around me in a piece but, as you mentioned continue <laughs> so important to me so important to me and when I listen to the news and everything, it's not good so I don't watch weird ass documentaries about axe murderers I don't watch any of that none of that mm. but I watched Arnold Schwarzenegger and where he came from in his life and how he's succeeded in three aspects of his life with the bodybuilding, then the movies, the greatest action hero of all time, and then a politician to the highest level he could get to. I don't know anybody else on the planet that has succeeded so astronomically in three areas. And he also spoke about areas of his life where he's failed and his vulnerability really came through. So he is my person that really inspires me. Oh, that's so cool. And that makes sense, the whole bodybuilding thing. Did you watch that before or after? You... <laughs> yeah, after. I only watched this like a week ago. And I was just oh, like, amazing. so he's become my new hero. I'm just, this guy is incredible. He had everything against him. The other thing was too, nothing that he did took off straight away. When he tried to make it into movies after being Mr. Universe, it took five years of constantly being told, no, no, your accent's too broad. You're too big. You look like a freak just stay in your lane. You can't change. And he just didn't listen. And he just kept going. And he, and he did all the training. He worked on all the personal development. He did all the training in the background that he needed to, to get there. It was just incredible. I often say persistence is my superpower. So I totally appreciate yeah. that. Persistence well, and, and consistency with your marketing and your personal yeah. branding. If you're consistent, you will get the results. That's probably what I want to leave on is if you give this a try. You're all inspired. Josephine and I have inspired you today. And you're like, that's it. I'm going to get my photos done. I'm going to make a video. I'm going to guest pot on a podcast. And then you get to the end of two weeks and you burn out and nothing happened. You didn't get any new clients. You go, well, that was shit. That doesn't work. It's, you've got to put the long game in. It's like dancing. You can't become an amazing dancer after three months of training. You know, it's going to take some time. I see. It's a consistency. So Apply what's to- next, Melissa? What's next for you? What's coming up? Oh, so for me, uh, so much. <laughs> I actually am really working on myself with um, being more of a speaker. So I want to do more speaking and more inspiring kind of stuff like this. Definitely um, being more consistent with my own marketing and my podcast, which is Connected and Confident with Melissa J. Scott. I have my own little membership, which I really want to build up to being quite mega which um, you can look at that on my melissajscott.com website. You'll see that there. That's the Content Creator Club, which is a really excellent weekly program that I have. Just doing more of these online courses and doing more one-to-many kind of things is what interests me because I want to have a bigger impact. Yeah. And I want to do just as much in the personal development space as I do in the marketing space because they go hand in hand. So I just really want more people to know. I'm just what I'm telling you guys to do. I want to do much the same. I want more people to know about what I do, what I talk about, because I know that the people that really run with it, their businesses have exploded. Yeah. Not everybody because they pull short but the people that have really run with it properly. Well, there's only so much you can do as someone who inspires and mentors. I know as a performing arts business coach is you can, you can give the goods, but at the end of the day, like you said, they have to implement, they have to be consistent. We can give the guidance, but it's really up to them. I mean, I know people that have created podcasts, recorded episodes and done all of it and never released one show, you know, it's, and, and then that that's also got to do with their fears and confidence and they work on. Yeah. So if you ask me, what would I suggest to everybody what to start working on is work on your self-belief mm. and drop me a line. If you want to have a conversation about that, you know, I'll happily, you know, email me or something, you know, I'll point and you we'll, right pop a, we'll pop a link to your um your instagram as well and to your website in the show notes so if anyone wants to reach out to melissa j scott um yeah you can definitely do that there as well all right well thank you so much uh i love that chat i, I love talking about 
the importance of personal branding and and I think it's less about that for me. It's more about showing up. Like you said, it's it's backing yourself. That's what it's really about because I know that from my own self. Like um, I've got a really energetic, fun personality. Um, I love, I'm an extrovert and it took me a while to be unapologetically myself online uh and now I just have fun with it like I know I'm the only performing arts business coach shaking my pom-poms and you know making dancing on 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 whatever reels and stuff but I'm not doing that because people tell me I should be doing it I'm doing it because I actually enjoy it and that's how I want to communicate my message and so the people that are going to be attracted to that are going to be attracted to that and the people that are not are not I cannot stand there on a beige wall with a suit jacket it's just not my vibe there are moments where I can tap into that, but to be that all the time is and and copying the way others are doing it, who you can tell it's their authentic self that way. It's just not me. Like I rock up last night, I did a I just did a short story um on Instagram. Um, the fact that I was trying to write a webinar and I couldn't get it done because my kids kept screaming and I ended up having to cook like bolognese and I just decided to grab my phone in the moment and to say, you know what? I have been interrupted (laughs) so many times and now I'm cooking bolognese and I was in the creative flow and and I just can't get it done. And sometimes you have to surrender to your children and that's mum life, right? So, you know, just being myself and showing up in that way for my community and going, you know what, this is, this is it. Like, this is who I am and this is real. And, you know, I, I find that the easiest way for me to show up because if I always have to put on makeup and the pretty dress and the bits and the, I just, I just don't do it. And and that is another thing, right? So yes, we want to show up professionally where we need to, but sometimes just showing up as yourself, people will relate to that. So yeah. The impact you have, people know when you're full of shit and they know when you're real. It's, it's an that. energetic thing. It's energetic. It's not even, it's just a feeling. How often have you ever said oh, it's just a vibe. They, I just didn't, oh, I just didn't feel it, you know? Like yeah. we make 95% of our emotions that we make are emotional, 5% are analytical. Yeah. So people like you or don't not like you. There'll be people watch this that think I'm a dingbat. I don't care. Yeah, it's, totally. They'll never get back to me. That's cool. it. That's it. That's it. All right. Well, show up, everyone. That's what we're saying. Thank <laughs> you so much, um, Melissa, for your beautiful time today. And, uh, yeah. We're loving it. It's really exciting. Thank you. Thank you. This episode was brought to you by my signature group coaching program, Studio Biz Success, an amazing and accessible online educational platform for performing arts studio owners designed to help you grow your business with confidence and get your results. Check it out at josephinelancuba.com along with other great industry resources to help you leap into the studio biz you deserve. If you love this episode, be sure to share it with your friends. You can tag me on social media at josephinelancuba and give it a review. Your support helps the show to grow so I can continue to provide you with useful, informative content. I'm Josephine Lancuba, your biggest cheerleader. Thanks for listening and shine bright.